Audley Group have been building and managing retirement villages since 1991, as well as changing the way people view retirement. In pioneering the sector, they helped bring independent living to the UK and have been blazing a trail ever since. Throughout their illustrious history, they've had one simple mission, to help people live better for longer, something they certainly deliver on with style. But how did Audley create and build such an unparalleled business? And how will the market leader continue to enhance the lives of its owners, customers, employees and investors in years to come? To find out, we spoke to everyone involved at every step. And we started with the creator of it all, CEO Nick Sanderson, to hear how it all began back in 1983 when Beaumont Healthcare was founded. Well, it all began more with a friend of mine, actually, who came to me. Uh, we were in conversation one evening, casually, and he'd just qualified as a doctor. And his primary challenge he found was just not having really good options for older people. So we decided with two options, really. One was to do nothing about it because it was just too big a thing to challenge, and the other was to have a go. So because we were young and optimistic and ambitious, we thought, well, let's have a go. So we, we created a business called Beaumont, Beaumont Healthcare. We managed to persuade some people to back us and set off to try and reinvent, particularly in those days, residential care, so the old traditional care home. So in the later 80s, we created a, a housing solution alongside every care home we did. We called it Close Care, which was to give people the opportunity to live in a home of their own still, which they would buy, but immediately in the grounds of and adjacent to a care home. So we built our first nine little bungalows in Stratford-on-Avon, um, opened in the late 80s, and we had a queue of people wanting to have a housing option and uh, Audley was then launched to take it to the next level. Hard though it is to imagine, nobody really had done anything like it in the UK. So everything was for the first time. So whether we were seeking financial partners, banks and others, investors, whether we were trying to get a planning permission, uh, whether we were trying to find people to design them, build them, everything was pretty much for the first time. So when we were looking for the first site, uh, it had to be somewhere where I was comfortable that I knew enough people to be able to persuade them to work with us. And I was very fortunate that this, Willicombe House as it now is, Willicombe Park, uh, was, a, was something that I knew of very well. I grew up in this town and I'd seen this. I'd walked past here actually when I was a child going to play sport at school. And I'd watched it. It was a Bernardo's children's home and it had come to the end of its life um, and was, now, was sad and neglected and I managed to persuade Bernardo's, the charity, to not only actually to sell it to us but to develop it with us in partnership and that's how the first one came about. I think my first week just actually walking through the main house, um, it was like something out of a movie. It's like, you know, you look around and you think, wow, I can't believe I work in a place like this. But everybody is so friendly. I can't, you know, imagine being anywhere else. The people, the owners, everybody you come in, into contact with in this in this village, they just, you know, they treat you like they're a real good friend and they're very helpful. We are the first village, so um, we're, we're, we're special. And I just think the people who live here are special as well. <laughs> There's a warmth about this place that, I don't think you would find anywhere else. What I'd seen all of those years is when we'd get into a conversation with people about what old people wanted. They talked about older people as if they were different, um, that they had different hopes and dreams and expectations. Um, and of course that's nonsense. Um, all older people want is what we want. They are just us, but older. You feel needed and you feel welcomed. There's always somebody, you know, to talk to you if you wish to go and join in or have coffee or entertain somebody. It's just, it's just open to everybody. It's lovely. And the core to one of the things they want is just, well, they want to be treated with respect, but they also want to have design that's contemporary, interiors and external design. They want to have a level of service that's consi that's appropriate for them um, and respects the fact that they are 
customers and need to be delivered with great service. And yes, they need the reassurance that they'll be looked after later in life if they need it, but also in a dignified way. Everything you need is here. And, you know, the grounds, the food, the people, everything, the care. If, if you need anything, it's at your fingertips. After the opening of Willicom Park, Audley went from strength to strength, acquiring five new sites for development and being recognised as one of the UK's primary innovators of retirement villages. But that was just the start for this innovative business. Yes, I always did have faith in the brand, actually, and what we do, because it's, it's, it responds to pretty straightforward and simple human demands and emotions, really, which is good housing, community, great service and, and access to support as your needs change as you get older. And if you keep to those core values, then you won't go too far wrong. I think when I first started, it had a real family feel to it because it was, it was small. Um, I, and I think one of the things I'm most proud of is even though we have grown and we're a much bigger business now, it still has that same culture. It still feels like everybody cares and everybody that comes to work has a full understanding of why they do and that's something that's never been lost. There were a number of changes we made over time. Um, the, probably the, the first was making sure we've got a large enough catchment of people so the villages are in uh, areas with m far greater population and have a far greater number of, of units um, to make the developments, ensure the developments are viable. So if you look at where we are around the country, from Yorkshire to the Midlands to Devon to Kent, there's a certain characteristics in the locations we're in, um, mostly defined by the number of people who live there who are perceived to be orderly customers. So some of the fantastic villages we've built over those, those years, um, yes, I mean, they've come to us because we looked for them rather than just by accident. Well, 2010 it was a very challenging year, we were in the global financial crisis. Prior to that we'd already committed to acquiring a number of those sites and indeed we owned a number of them. Um, so the big challenge was was getting them funded. Um, so fortunately we've got a very good pack, backer, Moorfield Group, and you know, we managed to find some um, entrepreneurial investors who would like to sit alongside us and develop um, what was still a very emerging asset class in the UK. There were challenges always, and again, challenges because of the innovation, the level of innovation and the difference. Though it seems fairly obvious now when you look back and think, well, everybody surely was welcoming of this new change, this new way of older people living, the deinstitutionalizing, if you like, of, of care for older people. Um, there are a lot of people who have very set views on the way it does, principally government, who, who do what they do and they, they like a tanker in terms of changing and because government sets policy whether it's planning policy or regulatory policy we've had to persuade them over time that there is room for this innovative solution between 2010 and 2017 we opened five villages um, with Clevedon in Ilkley St Elphins in Darley Dale um, Moat Park in Bearstead, uh, Inglewood near Hungerford and Binswood in Lemington Spa. When we first opened we had 32 owners um, and we didn't have the main house originally. We had a small chapel and we, um, we held a open day in the gardens of the chapel and we had a very small team of people I think there's only about six of us that worked there at the time had a barbecue had all the owners in with drinks and had a wonderful afternoon and then I think that if I jump forward to two years on from there I remember hosting a pantomime that about 30 of our owners were involved whether it was in set scenery performing along with team members all performing together and having a two-night show with 80 guests at each so we certainly came a long way quickly. There have been lots of highs over the years. Most of them have been around opening new villages I would say. We've, we've had a tradition of great opening parties um, and the joy of seeing them what started with a visit to an empty building like this 
uh, which then gets created and built and then opened and then those first people moving in and the staff joining us. Um, we've had some fantastic days where we've, we've seen, seen those dreams come alive. With six exceptional villages across the UK and seven more on the way, Audley Group were flying, but it wasn't just the quality of their villages that stood Audley apart from their competitors. The range of facilities we have, you think of it from a, from a housing lifestyle um, and care point of view, not everybody needs everything and not everybody wants everything and we have to respect that. At the core of everything we do is the fact that the individual can choose. So we like to design apartments now that have got the ability to be adapted um, as people's needs change as they go through their later years. And that could be a bathroom that's got the ability to add in additional grab rails here and there in the right places when they need to be in the future, but also kitchens with ovens at the right height, with shelves that can be pulled down from the cupboards. We give the owners opportunity to create their own clubs and interests, so that helps build the communities. If they are housebound and they can't come over for lunch or something, then the, the staff will take the food to them um, so they can still take part in having um, you know, the nice food that everybody else can enjoy over here. I remember when I was at St Elphins actually, um, a couple moving in in the very early days and he was 90 and he'd never been in a gym. He moved in and he was, came down very proudly to show a pair of trainers that he'd been out and his family were quite amused about the fact he'd been and bought his first pair of trainers and a couple of weeks later I was walking past the pool and I saw him on the treadmill really going for it um, and that was quite a significant moment I think of where, where you have the impact of those extra facilities we have. Um, there's more classes etc, um, we have aqua four times a week, we have pilates, yoga, um, chair base keep fit. People have a new lease of life when they move to us. Equally we have very active people that come to us straight away with a huge social life that we have to keep up with um, and so there's a balance between the two and often those people bring a great sense of community with them straight away. Core to everything is keeping an individual engaged whether that's physically in terms of activities in the gyms and pools or socially in terms of events where they keep communicating with people or educationally. I mean, walking here just now, I met one of our owners who was telling me she'd just come back from a Spanish lesson. Why not? You know, why stop learning? Lifetime learning is, is something that's really important. So keeping, those, keeping them stimulated is a way of making sure they get the very best out of their later years for as long as possible. And that is our whole job, to help people live better for longer. So the sales team are trained to take a step back, position themselves as the customer, to make sure that they're as helpful as possible. So almost no selling. In fact, that's the least important part of everything that we do. So being able to talk about life aspirationally, but also the difference that it makes being part of the community. This is about making sure that the decision is right for the customer and for ourselves, actually. People trust us to provide safe care, and we are very, very trusted to do that. Every village location has a care branch based on it. The relationships that our care team build with our owners are as critical as the ones that our village-based team members provide as well. The biggest challenge always has been people, finding good and the right people. But we're very uh, proud of the people that we recruit and train and keep. Um, and always finding them is a challenge, particularly actually at the moment. Uh, but we are blessed with fantastic staff uh, because you can build the best buildings in the world but they mean nothing without the people who run them. We get so much fabulous feedback about our team members and the lengths that they go to to make sure that our owners and customers who live with us in the communities enjoy their lives and feel safe and have fun where possible still. Once you walk through the door, the first thing that you then come to experience are the people, both in the head office, in our villages, right through to our owners and customers, are, are, are excellent. It gives me great pride when I go to a village and I see the interaction between our customers uh, or owners and our staff um, and how they go to great efforts to create a really family atmosphere. We are a unique business 
and people that join us they're always they always seem to want to be embrace embrace what we do more they um, embrace the development opportunities some of the most senior people here have been come from more junior roles and have developed their careers with us and who completely get and understand what Audley is about. They are the best people to pass to the next generation what we're trying to achieve here. So I started as a restaurant supervisor. I then became um, an operations manager, um, which back then was actually called a club services manager. Um, I then became um, a village manager, then progressed and moved into general manager role. And then there was a fabulous opportunity to uh, trained to become an operations director so I put myself forward and was successful and then three years later here I am. I started out as a, an evening carer um, and then I went on to a senior position as time went on. I'd done a bit of coordinating in the care office um, then I went on to compliance side of things and now this is my fourth month as care branch manager so they're very supportive and they're, they're so helpful you know, if you don't know anything, you just ask and someone will always be there to help out. There's always a lot of training available. Um, there's the, the mandatory stuff, but there's also stuff that you can choose to do. Um, and, you know, that, that's really good for personal development. Ever since I started, um, there's been no hurdles or barriers for me. Um, every opportunity I've been offered that I, I've taken. And if I've looked for opp opportunities, they've been made for me as well. Audley are very good at getting the best from you. You know, they work on, they focus on what you're good at and they'll enhance that with more training. And I think that's one of the things I like about Audley. We have some amazing people who work for Audley and we have a commitment to make sure that we look after those amazing people who, who come and join us and work for Audley Group. And we do that in many ways, but one of the ways that we do do it that makes a real difference to people is through the provision of the Audley Academy. It's really important that we understand what's important to people when they join us and what their career aspirations are. And through the Academy, we have a whole host of offerings to make sure that we tailor their development to what their aspirations are. So I think because Audley treat the staff so well and they give them such good training, they're so proud to actually go out there and do the job. I think they care about the impact that they have on people's lives because it's it's a visual it's a visual return that you get when you come into work at Audley you see the difference every person who comes and works for us has a heart and they really align their own personal values to those of Audley and I truly believe that people have an opportunity to be themselves and bring their best selves to work to make a difference to the lives of the people that we look after at Audley and Mayfield helping people to live better for longer is the main reason of why I continue to do what I do and I'm still loving every day that I come to work because I can see the difference. So, now we know more about Audley Group's history. But what does the future hold for the multi-award winning retirement operator? How do they intend to evolve, to grow, and most importantly, help more people live better for longer? Well, to keep the, to keep the brand and the culture, we're just gonna have to keep listening. That's all, because you know our customers will continue to change and progress. And if you think of the next generations coming through, um, right the way through to young people who are young now, who in 40 years will be looking at, at Audley as an option, Audley or Mayfield as an option, they'll have different likes and dislikes. And though we may keep those core principles the same, we just have to keep listening to them and making sure that it, it'll, it, it's going to respond to them just as much. I would sum up the orderly culture as kind, caring, um, a business that does things with integrity and for the right reasons. I think that's really unique and I think it's incredibly exciting to be part of something that offers so much to this segment of our society. It's not just about the what we do, it's about the how we do it that will really make you realise that joining orderly is a truly special thing. What I'm quite excited about is just the continual enhancement of what we offer. I really would like to see us stay at the forefront of just the experience we give people. Audley Group have a great, a great brand um, and we have to keep evolving. Our goal is to create vibrant communities with a sense of family and friendship, where people feel the sense of home, where people feel connected to something 
something that will make a difference for the rest of their lives. One of the challenges as you grow is that, that people naturally think they're less important because they're one of a bigger number. That applies to both our customers and to our staff. So somehow whilst we grow in keeping the focus on the individual and making sure that the people who run our villages continue to focus on that. I think hopefully now we'll be going through a phase of acceleration, acceleration in terms of growth in terms of delivering certainly our new Mayfield brand. I'm quite excited about that as an opportunity to provide more people uh, to access what those of Audley have already started to enjoy. So I think that is hugely exciting. Mayfield obviously is a crucial part of it because the scale of growth can be significant and can take it to a much wider audience who've really never had anything like it. We knew that by creating the Mayfield brand um, that we were after a segment of the market which would enable us to help more people make the decision to live in an IRC. We find that Mayfield owners move uh, from much closer to the village than perhaps an Audley owner and we also find the decision making of a Mayfield customer is a lot quicker than an Audley owner. Mayfield is a much more at the mid-market so we need to be in areas where there are a lot of people, we can see a lot of chimney pots um, and it's easy to see all well, those people living in those houses would want to move into this location um, in a, um, a development that's designed um, to support them as they, as they age. The principle of Mayfield is no different, it's about housing, lifestyle and care. We just wanted to be able to deliver it at a more affordable price. So our plans in the ESG space are to be um, operationally net zero carbon by the year 2030 and also to operate material net zero carbon villages by the year 2040. Um, and we're currently on our journey to um, put the plans in place to get there. We have a large estate, it's orderly, um, about 400 acres of land. So that gives us opportunity to put solar farms on, um, plant trees, um, those sort of environmental benefits. Everything right through, take an example around our, our villages, there was their quite sizeable physical uh, structures. So when we're just looking at new village development, you know, how can we make those carbon neutral? Uh, what do we need to do differently to make them more sustainable, uh, more environmentally friendly? And that's, that's happening now. The work that we've completed to date, we've actually put every village on renewable tariffs for both electricity and gas. And over the last year, we've managed to secure a 30% reduction in carbon emissions throughout all of our villages. Um, we've also planted 5,000 trees in our Audley Forest. And we are also currently making more strategic plans to achieve our target of being operationally net zero by the year 2030. I think Audley in 10 years will um, be not only the most respected um, operator within the space we work within, which it, I think it definitely is, I like to think it is, certainly. I actually think it'll have an important place in the whole of UK and the fourth largest business in New Zealand just builds retirement villages. Um, I'm not saying Audley will be that in the UK, but it certainly deserves more recognition across the corporate sector and generally amongst the public too. I think we will get bigger and I can't say, I can't say better because we're already good, but I think we will be the top of the game. I would hope that the sector as a whole is offering more choice. We'll still be making changes to people's lives. I think we will be enhancing our own offering and experience and we will keep moving and changing with the times and staying ahead of the market. As the retirement living, the integrated retirement community sector, uh, becomes more widely known. I really see Audley at the forefront of that. I think Audley will be the household name that everybody turns to, that is respected and known and has been a safe place for people in their later years to come and live and to live better for longer. Three words that sum up Audley. Um, um, I think opportunity. Happy. Vibrant. Caring. Satisfying. Compassion. Innovative. Connected. Kind. And yes, rightfully proud, I think. Proud of everything that we've achieved uh, and proud of everything that we're going on to achieve. 
We know that there's huge opportunity within the sector for all of our fellow operators as well. Um, there's enough to go around and we want to be able to bring both Mayfield and Audley to as many people as possible. We know that the demographic data supports tens of thousands of units over the next 10 years and we want to be part of that and we will be part of that. After more than 30 years in business, it's clear Audley Group, just like their customers, are far from retiring. And with Mayfield Villages taking the group in new and exciting directions, you can be sure Audley Group will continue to offer unrivaled independent living to thousands of people for years to come. What we do is really important um, and can really improve the opportunities for a whole generation of older people to come. It's just open to everybody, it's lovely. I would highly recommend to anybody who's doubtful or has any uh, qualms about whether they should or shouldn't, the answer is do it. Thank you.